Headlights go up. Headlights go down. Headlights go up. Eh, you guys know what I'm trying to do. All right, guys, how's it going today? Uh, today we are in a 1991 Honda Prelude SI four-wheel steering. La 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 la. Hey yo. Hey world, this is lollipop. Rats for the sweet tooth. The real things who want their ghost faces, she gooch. Big chain, changeling charms. They be dangling. 80,000 worth of ice. I strangle them. My raw fish girl paid the jeweler named Ishmael. Had the eagle fly back to my wrist. Bigger chips, bigger wings. All right, now as you can tell by the sea of vinyl in here. This car is a uh, early 90s, late 80s car, basically an 80s car. Didn't really change much, um, except for the uh, clear indicators in the back and uh, a revised uh, front end compared to its 80s styled brethren. All right, so as I take out my custom key, you know, it's a little uh, bottle opener, little key as well, so that when I want to drink and drive, uh, just drive, I'm just going to stick that all up in here. And as you can see, it starts. Alright guys, so we're setting off in a 1991 Honda Prelude. Now this isn't just any Prelude as well, right? I guess I should say anybody's Prelude. This is uh, mine. Yep. I've had this thing for close to two years now. Um, Having an older car like this is quite the mission. Keeping something like this on the road is uh, very, very, very difficult. You know, just on the way to shoot this and the last time, you know, I've had some overheating issues. You know, I've got some tranny issues, but hey, what are you going to do? Uh, I love this car. It's uh, very unique. Uh, you don't see it very often. I do see, you know, older ones and a lot of newer ones, but none really like this one and none that are uh, four-wheel steering as well. Cool thing about this motor is for the 1990-1991 years, they made a B21A1, so they just bore it out just a little bit more, give you a few extra ponies. It doesn't really make too much of a difference, but on the top end, you know, you, you kind of feel you have some fun with it once you wind this motor out. You redline around like 65, so uh, nothing too much. Uh, but it's still pretty fun once you get to the 4,000-5,000 RPM range. You really feel the uh, dual overhead cam kicking in, and it's pretty fun. So let's see if we can wind it out on here. So you really, really feel the uh, dual overhead kick in right about there, and uh, you get your max, you know, peak horsepower, peak torque, which isn't very much, but it's still a pretty fun car. Out of all the cars I've owned, you know, the Mitsubishis, the Toyotas, the uh, Mercedes, the Fords, the BMWs, this is honestly my favorite car and I plan on keeping it for quite a while, even though it doesn't plan on staying alive for me for that long. Um, you know, it's, it's broken down many times. Another cool thing about this four-wheel steering is that you can just really get up into any small area and uh, if you need to turn around, you can turn around. You really just get in there and you go and it'll do it just like a very, you know, very short wheelbase car. So the interior of this car isn't very roomy. The cabin itself is pretty small. I mean, you know, just to get in this car, you know, the steering wheel kind of hits my legs because it's quite, you know, oversized. Um, the leg room for the back is basically non-existent. Uh, with the stock seats, it was, uh, you know, you could maybe squeeze a person back there in a pinch, but now with these S2000 seats, um, unless they have no legs, uh, that's not happening. So it's basically just a shelf now. Other than the sea of vinyl you're getting in here, you know, it's, I mean, it's very basic. You've got your cruise control, you've got your headlights up, headlights down button. Yeah, you know, your defogger, your AC, you know, a stereo, which I replaced for the uh, double din. And that's that's really it. So some of the things in here that I, you know, don't really like are, you know, the uh, door-mounted seat belts. Um, for the Civic, they had the uh, sliding ones that go on here. But these stay mounted to, you know, to the points and the uh, you know, little buckles. And you just open the door and get in and get out. And I don't really like them. They're not really... 
they don't really seem safe. And uh, another con really on the air conditioning is they have the vents coming in through the door here. You know, it's, it was very popular back in, you know, 90s, 80s for uh, the AC to go through there. But honestly, on this car, it didn't work out too well. It's kind of useless. Um, being that it is an older car, these pillars are very small. The visibility is really great. You, you just see just about everything. And with this uh, little retro, you know, golf cart mirror here, you, you know, there's like no blind spots. Like you can see anything as long as you're paying attention. And yeah, the tack on this car isn't the greatest, too. It's very basic. You've got, you know, your rev counter, your speedo, your fuel, and your temperature. And other than, you know, you just got your bare essentials. You don't got, uh, you know, an oil pressure gauge, a battery, you know, gauge, and, uh, you know, it's just very minimalist inside this car, you know. It's just basic, really, as a sports car can get. So now, of course, this car does have the pop-ups. You know, got to keep it uh, retro. Retro. Uh, some another cool key features on this car is the rear end. I do love the... Uh, this whole conjoining, you know, center tail light. I love when cars do that, you know, and it's pretty cool that Dodge is bringing them back. Uh, it's a shame other cars don't have them. You got the uh, party roof going on in here. Turn down for what? You know, a little moon roof, or whenever you get your ladies in the middle of the night, you want to have some fun. You got that going for you, you know. You don't have a convertible anymore. Well, that's as good as it gets, unfortunately, but it's still pretty solid. You know, you got four-wheel steering, and uh, so it's very light in here. You see, you get that assist. You could you could really just turn this with one finger, just boop. And it's not really the greatest thing when it comes to like driving uh, on a main road. So here's an angle, just real quick, to show you how the four-wheel steering system works. So as you turn the steering wheel, the front wheels turn in that direction, and the rear wheels will turn in the opposite direction. Now this is just made so that it can help you with parking and, you know, overall U-turns. Now the way this is supposed to work is the rear wheels will turn in an opposite direction to the front wheels at slow speeds. But at faster speeds, they're all supposed to turn in the same direction to help you uh, get into those corners a little better. Here we go for a U-turn, kind of showing you how that works. Alright, so a quick breakdown of this 1991 Honda Prelude. Now it is a four-wheel steering car, which makes it a unique car, but that does kind of hinder it, making the steering very light. Now with a light weight and a very light steering, you get this thing which I'd like to call a uh, ground steer, which is where a little concaves and little bumps in the road kind of turn the steering for you. And it kind of makes it a uh, unpredictable and uh, not so uh, assuring ride. Now this car itself is very, uh, I'd like to say, uh, minimalist. It's very basic and as uh, simple as it can get. Now the cabin itself, like I said, is not very roomy. Um, it is definitely made for some small Japanese guys because if I sit up straight in the car, my head will hit the roof and my legs are kind of cramped even with the seat all the way back. Something that I do like about it is the openness. Uh, you I mean there's really no blind spots. The pillars are very small. You just get styling that um, you just won't see in a modern day car anymore. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll talk to you guys later.